Hi, this is Janos, it's Rugo World Audio, and I'm going to answer a very interesting question, a very uh, peculiar one, uh, asked by Hemendex, and, and he was asking about harmonics, harmonics that the uh, speakers need to reproduce, and, uh, and all of this was started in relationship to to adding a subwoofer to your system and, and whether it's possible to align it perfectly, uh, adjust it perfectly to your system or not, and what are some of the difficulties. And, and one difficulty that I uh, uh, pointed out in that video on which the comment was made was integration to the harmonic spectrum. And I pointed it out because when integrating subs, people talk about a million different things, but I almost never hear harmonic integration being mentioned. So if you are thinking about how to integrate a sub, there's like a dozen fundamental things you have to follow, and harmonic integration is just one on that scale. Uh, I mean, somewhere there <laughs> among that dozen things, but... Uh, it, if if you listen to let's say like classical instruments and, and, and tonality then it's an absolute must for you if you are not listening to tonality just pure energy content it probably won't ever bother you and uh, and now i'm going to uh, embark more on this comment because uh, because he is asking uh, do I agree? Is it not possible to recreate a sound without deviant artificial harmonics? Uh, it, this is a really tricky and, and very hard question because what is the artificial harmonics? What is deviant harmonics? And, and, and for that, I think first let's look at, at uh, music instruments themselves. So how uh, how they create sound and uh, what gives the harmonic spectrum that 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 these instruments make and and i'm just i have here now just a baroque orchestra as an example because it has most of the instruments that that we listen to uh, there's of course a few more like let's say when you look at the church organ <laughs> that has uh, some additional stuff and we have also woodwinds, but uh, let's let's just uh, get back to this picture. And when we put all of these together, we have most of the instruments that we are listening to. And of course, there's like a million kind of different sounds. But when you add up all these instruments, these are the ones we have been listening to since our early childhood. This is what our ears are calibrated to. So these are our measuring standards against which we compare uh, what we hear from a stereo and and these should serve as our comparison because these are the natural sources and at at least for me how i think of audio what audio is to me i go in this direction that i calibrate my ears my system and and how i design my systems to give me to keep me on this path to reproduce these instruments and, and I consider these as natural harmonics, so as producers of natural harmonics. And what are these? So when you look at, at basically all of these uh, string instruments and even the harpsichord, they are a combination of metal and wood. So you have a metal string uh, or sometimes it can be even like a nylon or a gut string, uh, but for practicalities, uh, often uh, there are metal strings depending on the instrument as well plus a wooden body and uh, here you don't see it but can we see it here so there's one more instrument this, this is the arch lute so this is kind of like a bass lute like that can play an octave lower than a normal lute and uh, that's also same thing string and a wooden body and this is the ancestor of the guitar guitar uses same technology as well so so basically uh, the sounds that metal and wood makes that that's that's what is the for our ears the uh, the the natural range of spectrum I would say 
and and of course when we go for uh, for the uh, wood, wood I mean the wind instruments they can range from the full full on wood to uh, wood and metal combinations going more towards the metal and and full metal like a saxophone it's all metal there's no no more wood in it so so now we got a range of, of instruments and and then the way they uh, they propagate sound is is really different and of course when we look at a, an organ a church organ there are some pipes which are full metal and other that are like uh, wood wooden pipes or wood and metal combination pipes plus there is one more instrument that we have not looked at uh, well before we look at that, we can look at the harp, which is also a, a, a wood, a wooden frame, and then a metal subframe and metal uh, strings attached to it. So that's also a wooden metal instrument. And when we look at uh, more instruments in the background, metal, metal, and, and th there's the big drum. So the drum is also, that has a skin on it. That, that's, that's something new. That's like a third type of sound. And then under third type of sound, I mean ma wood, metal, and skin. This is the three things that, that, that we hit on or we pluck it or, or tap it or, or do something with it. And, uh, and, and, and we make these materials resonate and based on their, their, their shape, their length, their, their sturdiness, the actual wood or actual metal it's made of, they, they, they have uh, different frequencies they preferentially excite and, and when, when the harmon fundamental frequency is uh, excited it will excite additional resonant modes within that body which is not just uh, different frequencies but at different times because when you see like here's the this uh, upright bass and uh oh here now now you can see my pointer uh so so with the bass you can see that first or, or violin or whichever or even guitar first the strings are made to resonate so you have an initial sound which is like a fast and high energy sound high frequency sound going to your ear and then that those resonances uh, are transmitted over to the body and then there's like a different set of resonances that are excited within the body of the instrument and then they are radiated out from the body of the instrument to the air with a delay compared to the strings and, and that's how the majority of, of a classical orchestra uh, uh, works. Majority of these instruments, how they work is that you have an initial dose that you get from the strings. Even with the harpsichord, the initial plucking of the strings happens uh, through the strings transmitting that sound and then the wooden body resonates and that transmits the, the training edge of the sound so this is one set of character of sound and and i spent so much time on it because uh, these instruments are really i would say the bread and butter of of, of, of a western cultural heritage and and of course there's like a bunch of other instruments that for like like the woodwinds or drums etc uh, but but I would emphasize uh, uh, these instruments what's going on okay uh, because um, they they have the biggest uh, complexity in, in their harmonic spectrum so they they produce the most complex uh, frequencies that, that, that come out from their bodies and the frequencies both like in in the in the time domain not just in the frequency domain and and also yeah so i think they are kind of like if we compare it to audio they are like the high-end instruments of audio i mean of the musical <laughs> instrument world uh and 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 that's why i think
think in my experience, what I have experienced, don't take it as granted, just take it as my word, that these instruments, which are complex string and wooden body, these are the hardest to reproduce by any stereo system. And, uh, and I associate this with the harmonic, complex harmonic spectrum of these instrument. Because when you uh, look at woodwinds, like for example, you look at a saxophone, the, the saxophone sound, uh, when you analyze it through a, a spectrum analyzation, you notice that the harmonic spectrum is much simpler than, than that of, a, of, of these wooden instruments. And then you have predominantly a, a, a fundamental frequency and then very high order uh, upper harmonics and uh, that gives it that really shrill, really powerful uh, sound. Uh, and uh, for the organ, they, they also have, these pipes have a very clean output, each of them, what gives the complexity of the church organ, it, 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 this, the complexity of the sound is that, you see, there's like thousands of pipes and they are just uh, uh, singing together and uh, and, and you, I think everyone has heard the expression, pulling out all stops. It means that you are engaging all of the reg registers, all of the different sets of pipes in the church organ. So that's when you have that really full, big sound. Ah, where, where did I start? Uh, I was going somewhere with all of that. Okay, so I was basically uh, getting into what is deviant or artificial harmonics for me. So in my definition, deviant or artificial harmonics is a harmonic spectrum that is not present in any of these instruments that I have just shown to you. What sort of uh, materials would create these resonances? Because when we looked at these, all of these instruments use these three types of building blocks. Metal, wood, skin. These three. So whatever uh, harmonic spectrum is excited by music instruments, that's using these three materials. And, and with skin we can also add the human voice. That, that's also kind of like, like a complexity. It, it's much more complex than any of these, but uh, but uh, relatable <laughs> a little bit. But maybe let's leave out human voice for now, because that, that would add uh, just a tremendous additional complexity to how we can grasp the human voice. It's, it's just so much more complex than any music instrument mankind ever could conceive of. So now let's just return to Music instruments we have, I, I would say in any culture, use these three materials as, as resonators. And, and all of them, when you, when you resonate them by any means, blowing it, hitting it, plucking it, whatever, it will resonate uh, as these materials resonate. And, and when you make your speakers out of these materials, uh, then they will behave uh, like those instruments behave. And if you make speakers that are using materials that are not found in natural instruments, then those materials, when your drivers may uh, get excited, they are producing the sound, it will make the cabinet resonate as well. And, uh, and, and the cabinet won't always resonate at the same frequency as, as the resonator resonates. Yes, it will resonate at the same frequency as well, but it will also excite the dominant resonant modes of that cabinet. And when you have materials like plastic, or, or, or now what is uh, fiberglass, or, or Kevlar, or, or whatnot, or adding like dampening materials like uh, uh, mass loaded vinyl or anything. Those things are never found in music instruments and they have their own 
signature of harmonic spectrum, harmonic spectra, that is that sticks out like a sore thumb when it gets excited because it's not part of any orchestra that you and I are familiar with. And, and you might be saying that, uh, okay, maybe, let, let's say, uh, it's a good thing that, that I have like uh, these speakers, let's say these have a, a wooden cabinet and a paper cone. So yeah, a paper cone is, is like a skin, like, like a drum skin, kind of similar material. And, and the wooden cabinet, yeah, well, I can assume it, it's a little bit similar to the wooden body of a violin or a cello or something. But not, not as sophisticated, perhaps, not as high quality uh, tone wood, but that's where I want to grow my speakers towards to have uh, more of that uh, refinement, the ability to transmit sound in such a wide frequency range with such speed as, as, as a cello would transmit. Uh, and, and you are saying that when a cello plays, and then it's it's it, it's good good thing that that I have this wooden body. But what about uh, let's go back here when a saxophone plays? Is it good to play it through here because the saxophone doesn't have a wooden body? So now, for all of you guys, I I want to add something that that ha that is never being mentioned by any audiophiles or any companies making uh, speakers or, or audio products is that when you listen to music instruments and, and now listen at a concert and, and you have a bunch of people there. Let's imagine that here in the center there's a saxophone player, okay? Uh, so now as the saxophone player would play, the playing that he plays excites the body of the violin. So the violin uh, I mean the cello, or and the violins as well. So all of these wooden bodies of these instruments will be excited by the sound of the uh, of the saxophone and will contribute to the overall sound that you experience in the audience. And that's why, for example, uh, if you're listening to a concert, like all of these people here, and there's this lady playing the cello, this cello sounds different. So if you would be sitting in the audience and the only person, or I would say all of these people would hear, but the only music instrument would be this cello, it would sound different compared to every other music instrument plus the harpsichord being here. Because when she plays, they will all resonate. And when you are a musician, you know, you feel it that when, uh, when, when this guy just starts playing his boo 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 bass notes, then, then you're, you can feel it in your own instrument that it vibrates and resonates. And that's why orchestras are a special thing, because all of the sounds of the instruments end up together. And you would say, oh, okay, but in a saxophone, what if you don't have a cello? Probably you have a bass player, right? And there's also a, a piano there. So all of these instruments will resonate to the saxophone sound. So, and, and will make it richer. Everything is, uh, just adds up to it. So. so I would say that that is about harmonic accuracy, is that in real life, we have multiple instruments and they, their sound adds up. And, and, and when we try to reproduce that, uh, we want to reproduce it in a way that whatever uh, alteration or, or, or speakers are doing to the sound, they should conform to those alterations that these instruments in real life do to each other. And yeah, it will never be the exact same as the thing that you heard at, the, at that concert hall. It cannot be the same. It will be altered. Yes, it will be altered. However, now let's go back to the second part of the question. Is it even possible to recreate the exact sound the microphone is hearing? And, and, and to answer this question, I, I, I get a, a, a question that precedes this question. Is the microphone hearing what you would hear there? 
is it recording the right thing? And my answer is no, it's not. Uh, when we go to recording studios, you will see that they have multiple sets of microphones. I know of a recording studio here uh, in Kahala, and they have over 200 pairs of microphones. And, and that's because there's not a single set of microphone that records exactly what is going on in the room. Every single microphone is deviant. It ha they have artificial sound. They, they are distorting the sound. And it is up to the artist and the recording engineer to pick what sort of distortion they want to hear and they want to add to the sound. So we do not have the ability to accurately capture what's going on. We do have so-called measuring microphones. For example, Bruel and Kier, they are making uh, microphones that are calibrated measurement microphones. And, and they should technically be hearing what's, what's there in the air. But, but here, this is the very big but is that uh, when you make recordings with measuring microphones, they sound absolutely horrid, unlistenable. So mm, what's going on? So this means that uh, our systems, or stereo systems, whatever is happening, whatever material is captured, from decoding that material to giving it back to you in your room, there is a lot of transformation, a lot of deviation going on. And if you use like measurement microphone accurate material to feed it, it will be a mess. So whatever we do at the microphone at the front end, we must uh, introduce some deviations which compensate for all of this what's happening in the chain, in the reproduction chain. And um, what I have noticed uh, through this is my third decade of building speakers and 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 uh, and fine tuning audio systems, is that uh, by going with this sort of technology, when when you have uh, the live cabinet, so-called uh, uh, live cabinet, which means that I'm not trying to choke the cabinets down. To, to become a, kind of like an invisible thing, which is not possible to do. You cannot stop resonances. So when the driver is making the air move, that, that those air movements are going to excite your cabinet no matter what. Even if it's concrete, it's going to get excited. And, 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 and today what the companies are trying to do is they're going at it like, like a jack and hammer type of uh, solution. And, and saying in a thinking as a computer would think in absolutes, they are trying to minimize the absolute value of what the uh, cabinet is uh, adding, what, what, what those deviations are that the cabinet makes. And, and, and they think that, okay, if it's absolutely the minimal, it, it, it probably is better. And then, yeah, we, we can say that, yeah, there, there's less things added if, if the total amount of the, the cabinet's output is minimal, then that's the least added to the driver's uh, output. However, uh, there are problems with that because the, it, there is, are no efforts being done that whatever remains that low level noise is that in correlation with the music or it's harmonically unrelated, because when it's harmonically unrelated, it will stick out like a sore thumb. And, and for most people who, who are not trained listeners, who just, you know, just sit down and, you know, I want to listen for something fun, it, it might not bother you at all, whatsoever. But once you spent a few decades listening to violins, enjoying your uh, Bach cantatas, and uh, maybe like playing tabla or, 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 or your, your sharod. Then if you hear that, even just that uh, 20, 30 dB lower, so it's like 100 times or 1000 times less energy 
than the main output but there's some grunge there that's that's just not related to the music it's going to be so annoying for you that you will go for the stop button because you can't listen to it and if there is something happening that may be uh, 10 times more in the energy level so it's maybe like a 15 db down or maybe even just 10 db down so like 10 of the energy but it's 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 together it's forming a harmonic unit with the music you are hearing it's not going to distract you because as a musician when you listen to music then you are listening to the information content which is like uh, part of the music. So does it make music the whole or does it destroy the unity of those sounds that you are hearing? And, and I think that's the deviant or artificial harmonics when it is destroying the unity of sound. And, uh, and going into that more, into the physics, mathematics, uh, I think that would require a really deep study that, that to to do this like how you can prove this if i can select it yes no yes how can you prove this this would be the like like a phd thesis material and then you would probably need uh, like a substantial funding for it and and then a really well equipped lab to do all of these studies and access to instruments musicians professional musicians who are playing these instruments and also like uh, uh, various uh, loudspeakers audio systems so uh, i think about uh, funding of about 10 million dollars that that's what you would need to prove this and, and elaborate on that and and unless someone has 10 million dollars uh, for that uh, and 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 the department and the phd student full-time working on this for five years we have nothing to to say on how to prove that to uh, a sufficient depth that would be uh, scientifically significant and not just uh, talk for national inquirer so so i think i think that's 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 the most important thing and and uh, so so i think that's it I, I i i've taken a lot of time with this video i i really hope that this explanation made some sense to at least and um, and everyone just please um type <laughs> what you think about this matter what are your experiences with it what what do you think would be like uh, proper harmonic content of music, what disrupt the flow of music. And there's so many things I have not even touched upon which are really vital about this subject, but it's already half an hour and I don't want to stretch it any longer. So thank you, Emma Dex, for your wonderful question. Thank you, Tim. Bye-bye.